Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back in. This is more bite-sized business advice. And today's episode, I have a sales whisperer with me. She's whispering at us already. I love this. Now, we're going to talk about sales and we're going to talk about a bunch of different things. And I think all of my dirty little secrets are going to come out. I don't know what's going to come out, but I am the experiment on today's episode. I'm all for it. Uh, I have an amazing guest, Nancy Zare. Welcome to the show, and thank you for being here. Brandon, it's my pleasure. Can't wait to uh, air out the dirty laundry, right? That's right. <laughs> I'm I'm excited and nervous all at the same time. I don't I don't really know how this is going to go, but I love it. I'm I love doing stuff like this because it gets to show who you are, how you do what you do, and you're probably going to blow my mind at the same time. So I'm excited. Tell me what you do though, because we you have three tips for turning prospects into clients. And you call yourself a, well, your clients call you the sales whisperer. That's a very unique title. So what is it that you do? Well, as you know, whisperers communicate with nonverbal entities. And in my case, it's a skill that I teach. And that is how to identify people's personality or what I call their buying style by going to uh, nonverbal entities like a LinkedIn profile or their website. Hmm. Very cool. So tell me, I mean, is this, you, so if I were about to sell you something, if it, if I was going to get on a sales call with you, um, I guess there's two sides of this sales call one-on-one -on -one or a website. How would I, do you teach your clients how to understand who they're about to talk to in that scenario? You got it. Exactly. So before you meet with someone who you don't know, maybe you've exchanged some text messages, emails, perhaps they just appeared on your calendar and you want to know who this person is before you speak with them. This will give you, of course, an advantage when you have that initial conversation because you know what to expect and they may not. Hence, it will make your ability to relate to them and form a relationship go much more quickly, more smoothly. It gives you that competitive edge. Yeah, absolutely. Is this? Do you specialize in people who are dealing one-to-one -one, or is this, does this translate over to a website where someone's coming to you to buy a, a, maybe a physical product, an Amazon type thing? So I'm not focused on, on physical products, although I'm sure it could work for them as well. I'm really focused on service-based uh, businesses. Um, and it works whether you're looking at an individual's profile or an individual's posts, or you're looking at a company's website because both individuals and companies have a personality style. And when you identify that style, and now this is tip number one, you adjust what you say to match the style. Immediately, your prospect is going to relax, feel comfortable, the trust builds, the sales resistance drops away, and that opens the door to doing business together. Mm. Interesting. So you're, I mean, obviously that's a competitive advantage because you know exactly, at least very closely, what who that person is and how to communicate with them. Is that is that one of the bigger ones you, that that those aha moments you have with people because they're not going in necessarily cold to a sales call anymore? Exactly. It, no more cold calls at this point because now you know who that person is going to be. And as a result, not only can you match your style, you also know, is this someone who's likely to buy today or is this going to be someone who's going to take their time? And if so, what are they going to need for follow up and how many touch points are we likely to have in order for this person to make up their mind? You're getting all that from a LinkedIn profile. You're right. Absolutely. This is magic. I see why you're the sales whisperer already. Uh, I'm excited to do this for me too, but that was tip number one. I'm curious to hear what, what tip number two is. So tip number two, I deal a lot with people who don't want to be pushy, aggressive, and salesy. Uh, that is definitely my mantra. And so there's always that awkwardness that when the person doesn't say yes immediately, 
well, how often do you follow up then? You know, how do you continue? And so my second tip is to always ask for permission. When you have gotten your prospect's permission before, during, and after conversations, you no longer have to worry that you're being offensive or annoying because the person has said, yes, I welcome your next contact. Mm. Is there a way to uh, make a process out of that? I'm, I'm so full disclosure, I'm a fractional COO. I tend to think in structure and operation. Um, and my first question that pops up is, okay, I have permission. You're also telling me I would also understand how frequently that person would appreciate follow-ups. That immediately means I probably can't make a process to automate this. So how do you balance that? Oh, yes, you can. You see, there are four major personality styles. Now, we're a blend of all four, just in different amount. And hence, you know, we come up with a different mixture, so to speak. But there's usually one that is the decision-making style. And when you know what that style is, now you can adjust your follow-up and have an automated system, so to speak, that you can put into place so that you know, you know that you're on the right path and can work with that person successfully. What does that do for uh, the fortune is in the follow-up, right? That's a common phrase. Yeah. What, what does that do for your, your sales rates post initial conversation? Cause it, that has to feel like a personal touch, even though it's automated. Well, again, it, it automated in the sense that you now know what their style is and hence you also know their values and each of their values are, words and content that you can use as well as an approach that will match their style. So that's where the so-called automation comes in. But I still believe, especially if this is a follow-up, that at this point you have a relationship and that the focus needs to be on building that relationship. Would you agree? Absolutely. A hundred percent. But that what I see is people, even if it's a personal email or a text, it is a templated message and it that deteriorates the relationship, which we obviously don't want to do. Boy, and that's exactly correct. It does deteriorate things. You see, you can automate the initial process of beginning a relationship and, and, and perhaps even putting someone on your calendar. But at that point, once you've had a real time conversation, I believe you need to, at this point, continue in, in genuine, authentic, conversation. Mm, yeah, that's that's huge. I love that. So what's the third one? The third one is to not to use a script, to speak conversationally. And it sounds easy to do, but believe it or not, there actually are some suggestions, which I've outlined in, in my books about how to speak conversationally. Many people stumble in this area because they are so focused on the goal of the sale that they forget it's about the relationship and developing that person to person contact. Yeah, I'm I'm curious what what people say when they hear that for the first time because I I see if we were to just paint a broad picture here, there's two paths. There's those who are naturally gifted and enjoy sales and there are those who will do anything to get away from selling somebody anything. <laughs> <laughs> For those people, um, I, they seem to take comfort in a script. And when you take that away from them, first of all, it's not effective. So let's just let's say that real quick. But when you take that away, that structure, that 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 crutch, if you will, does that make them more nervous or how do you kind of get them over that hill? Interestingly enough, it you know, a script is really to help guide you towards a, a destination point. Right. And so. You want to get rid of the memorized robotic uh, words and sentences and instead know exactly where you're headed, what you're trying to accomplish, but do it in a natural, authentic way, a conversational way. And what that means is asking good questions, using good listening skills, and then following up with an interest comment that shows I'm listening, I got your message, and you're saying that in order to buffer before you continue to ask another question. Because as you know, sales is all about asking questions. And when you ask question after question after question, it sounds like an interrogation. And you want to avoid that feeling and that situation and instead make it conversational. 
Ooh, that's that's a great tip right there. And I think I think just from thinking back on conversations I've been I've been on as not the person selling but being sold to, you can so clearly tell like who who is literally like, oh, let me look over here. What's my next question? Where am I? Oh, let me ask you that one. <laughs> and it's just it's so painful. So yeah, I agree. It is so painful. So when you're you're working with people, you get them. These are the the three tips. Do you have a do you have a way to get them in front of the right people then? And also maybe say like, hey, you're going to sell better to a certain personality type uh, or, or is that completely off the table just because you have the understanding of who you're talking to? Yes. When you know that by your personality style, um, it, it absolutely makes a huge difference in what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, and how you're going to follow up. I mentioned there are four styles. One of the styles makes a decision, usually right at the beginning, the first or second contact. They're fast, they're decisive, they want it off their plate, they're results oriented, bottom line, etc. You're not probably going to follow up with this person because if you haven't asked for the sale on that first occasion, there's a good chance they've gone somewhere else and done business with someone else. It's the other three styles, and the majority of the population fill those styles. In fact, uh, there's a famous study that was done by uh, Chet Holmes. Actually, it, it, it's it wasn't a study so much as an observation that at any given time, only 3% of the population is actively looking to buy something. The other 97% need to be nurtured and you need follow-up. So if that's the case, how do we follow up with them? What's their style? What kind of information or what kind of material are they looking for? And it varies depending on style. Some of them are looking for testimonials, references. They want a proposal. They want a step-by-step -step process. They want certainty and a structure. And I'm sure you've had experience working with people like that. Am I right? Yes. Okay, that's one style. Another style, they take a deep nosedive into the information, ask really probing questions, want scientific evidence, need statistics and data. This is yet a different style that's that you need to follow up with. They usually take the longest to close because they're so thoughtful and careful in researching your proposal. Right? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then our the third style that the, uh, of, the, the, of the remaining, this is the one who really needs a relationship. The data, the references, not so much of interest to them, they want to buy you. And you, you kind of sense that it's about their wanting the connection with you on a personal basis. They do business with people that they truly are friends. And so there is more going on than simply, you know, what's the proposal? What's the process? How much does it cost? You know, what, what's the research behind it? This is the person who wants to connect with you authentically. And in this case, stories help, but really, there, there needs to be that personal touch and it can't be automated. Soon as you automate it, Brandon, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm curious um, to air my dirty laundry here and figure <laughs> out, let's let's put my life on display for the listeners. Um, and real quick before we do that, you have, uh, you have a really cool offer for the listeners. You have a, a LinkedIn profile audit. Yes, I do. And in fact, it's even better when we talk about the audit after they realize what the sales whisper or the LinkedIn whisper can uh, ascertain, can figure out by looking at someone's profile, because that's exactly what the audit author is about. Uh, I'm available to look at your profile and tell you whether you're attracting the people you want to attract. Uh, and obviously, that would be important, right? we're about to find out if it's working and in real time. So I have, uh, first of all, the link to that offer is down below, wherever you're watching or listening. Um, it's in the show notes. So you can check that out. We're going to do this. I have my LinkedIn profile pulled up. Nancy does too. Um, we're not going to share a screen because it's, this is mostly an audio podcast, but for those of you watching link to that is also in the show notes. So you could do this real time with us, but Nancy, I'm going to just, I'm going to sit back and cringe a little bit, but tell me, tell me what I need to know about me. 
So when someone visits your LinkedIn profile, and by the way, when you do a Google search, there's a good chance that your LinkedIn profile is actually number one on your Google search. So do you need to have a good LinkedIn profile? Absolutely. Plus, there are over 1 billion, that's billion with a B, users on LinkedIn. So again, you want to think about the, your profile because it's a very frequently visited part of who you are. And so when someone goes to your profile, of course, they're immediately struck by a big banner, but they also are looking at your picture. And most humans are riveted towards another human and want to look at that photo. So this is where it's very important that you have a professional looking photo. And I'm glad to say Brandon does. So that says a lot about him. He cares. He's trying to make a good impression. Uh, these are good marks in your favor, Brandon. So you did have a professional photo taken, right? I don't know. We're going to have to, we're going to define professional for this one, but I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> okay. He doctored it up. And the reason I say that is because behind him is a lime green uh, circle and there's some uh, white dots and so forth, which frames his head beautifully. And so clearly that didn't come from a professional studio. That came from the talent that Brandon or one of his team members has. Now, when you look at someone's photo, the first thing you tend to notice is a smile or a lack of smile. And I mentioned there are four personality uh, types? Well, there are four smiles that correspond to those types. Smile number one is cocky and absolutely I've got the cat's tail and they may or may not have their lips spread and see their teeth, but confidence exudes all over the place. And you get a sense that, boy, you're lucky to be looking at me because yeah, I'm all it and then some. And that's not your smile. Then there is a smile that's very genuine and warm. It makes the eyes crinkle. They're looking directly at the camera. You feel like they want to reach out and give you a hug. Now, he's got a good smile like that, but not to the extent that I just identified. His smile is more the number, the next style, which is it's reserved. It's for the camera. He knew he was having a picture taken and he smiled. And it is a warm smile, but it's also a smile for the camera. You feel like there's just a little bit of reserve taking place, a little bit of we need to be introduced first. And the last type of smile, well, the person's not smiling. They're mm, serious maybe even frowning, maybe a grimace because they want to get out of here. Please just take the photo. Now, your smile is much more of a posed smile. So that tells me that you care about your professionalism. But I also noticed that that lime green behind you is saying, hmm, I'm a pretty smart dude here and I am bright. And then when you look at his banner, there's a yet another picture of Brandon, and this one is absolutely staged. He's got his fingers pointing. He's got his mouth open. He looks excited. This is really the guy he is. He is dynamite and energetic. And so here's the scoop. You are a combination of those two styles, the style that's energetic and excitement and, and wants to win, and also the geeky, smart, thoughtful person who is able to give information, but also learn and therefore be smart about how you present yourself. That's my conclusion. So what do you think? I think you're, you're pretty spot on with that. Yeah. I, when you said I was getting nervous with the second smile type, you're like, they want to reach out and give you a hug. And I was like, I'm not a hugger. But then you said, no, that's not Brandon. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, we know your smile is very much more of a reserve smile, a camera smile. It isn't the geeky smile that says, you know, I'm very serious, you know, and I'm all that. Nor is it that confidential smug, well, you're just lucky to look at me. I, you know what? I think people are. And that's why they're watching this podcast. No, I'm kidding. We love no, having and, you, you know what? The second photo says that. Right. The second photo with the fingers pointing and, you know, there I am, you know, it, that one. And again, because you're smart, you know that that's going to be the way to engage with people, to encourage them to engage with you. So to me, that 
your smartness is probably your major buying style. And so again, what I do is not only help you learn the skill to read a profile, but then I advise you what does it mean when it comes to selling. And so what this would mean is to expect the fact that you're not going to get Brandon to say yes on the first try. He's got to look into it a little bit and get more of the underpinnings of why what you're saying is valuable. So we have all this information. You know everything about me. You know you know too much about me. My dirty laundry's out there. Um, yeah, people in the in, listeners, and, and you want him as a client. I've just given you the secret of how. Yeah, I'm going to can... get an inbox flooded after this episode. <laughs> buy my stuff. Buy my stuff. Here's all the information up front. That's um, right. That's right. Here's how you can get to him. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you for those tips. Not for me. Thank you from the listeners in case they wanted to sell me something. Um, <laughs> but the real question is, okay, so I know, I, I know my style. I know who I am. When I read this from a, another person's profile, I'm going to someone else's profile. Sure. What are the things that I need to keep in mind in order to show up effectively for that first conversation? Again, what's their dominant style? And, and the 70% of the population actually have two styles that they switch between. A personal style, their social style, so that will be the one that you're going to talk with initially, but then their business style, which is the style that will make a business decision. And so, again, based on your profile, it's very easy to figure out what those are. I saw two styles in you, and I think socially you're going to be that energetic, active guy that will be easy to talk with and, and, and full of energy. But when it comes to making a business decision, nope, you're going to put the damper on it and collect information. And so this is part of what I teach. Uh, it's something you can learn. It's a skill. Or, of course, you can hire me to do it. I love it. And good for me because I gave you both my styles right on that page. Like how, how easy am I making this for people? But you know what? This is true for everyone. Yeah. Everyone's styles is there for on full display if you know what to look at. Now, we only looked at smiles. Here's another tip for you listeners. Scroll all the way down to recommendations. Now, not everybody has them which is, again, telltale about generosity of spirit. But then look at the recommendations, not the ones they've received, the ones they gave. Why? Because this is their, they're using their words, their values to recommend somebody else. And this is how they make business decisions. So when you put them together, what they look like, as well as what they talk like or what how they think, the combination will tell you how you can approach them and increase the possibility of doing business together. Hmm, that's brilliant. That's that's some next level ninja sales whisperer techniques right there. It is, it is. And by the way, there are AI tools that will read personality style, but they don't read it the way I've just told you. They only look at the surface. And Brandon, every one of us is trying to present ourselves in a certain way. And the AI tools, they're duped. They fall for it. They say, okay, the projection is the person. Yeah. No, it's not. It's the projection. Mm. That's yeah, that's so true. And that's like, that's why I love that you pick up, pick up on the, what they're saying and, and what are they, they're telling you what matters to them. Exactly. And exactly. And so it, it, not only what matters to them, but now those words, there's a whole collection, a bucket of words and phrases that will connect with them authentically and quickly, which will then actually reduce the amount of time in the sales cycle before they say yes. Mm, that is so cool. Nancy, I wish we could explore this all day, but guess what? You can, if you're the listener and you want to, and you need to take your sales game to the next level um, and really understand how to communicate with people better. This is so cool. Nancy, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. To your sales success. And for those of you who were interested in that, like Nancy and I mentioned before, the uh, LinkedIn profile audit, the link for that is down below in the show notes, wherever you're watching and listening, she'll tell you all about you, all the ways people can sell to you better. And then I'm sure so much more on that audit. So um, make sure you subscribe, make sure you check that out. We love putting these episodes out five days a week. We'll see you on tomorrow's episode of Harmonious at Lunch.